What's going on guys? Samuel One World from Samuel One World Productions here. Back with my first official tier list video. Which is something I actually wanted to do for quite a while, but never actually figured out how to actually do it. But now that I've figured it out, hopefully, I'm going to be doing a tier list for you all. So my first official tier I did try to do a couple of kind of like similar tier list, but in my own way. But this is my first true official tier list, and I hope I'll be doing these ones a lot more often on this channel. I just say I'll. That's something I also wanted to do, honestly, as well, along with also on Twitch as well, but I just said that didn't, that would be the best, so just leave it at that, but almost our timing and everything, I apologize. So what I'm going to do for my first official tier list is rank every season a big brother. And first of all, I'm on, Twitch, on, my, on my original YouTube for a while, knows that I'm a huge fan of Big Brother. But it's, some, it's not really the best as it is nowadays, if you watch the show nowadays, but... And the show I still do enjoy, the show I still get a kick out of, the show I still look back fondly on. And it has been a mess that I actually did a... Which I think I did do a ranking like, around when Big Brother all started, especially when I ranked every season of the show. And I've done a lot more seasons that came out since then, and so this is coming on kind of more of an updated ranking on scene, and I'm... And I'm going to break a total of 38 seasons. That's the kind of the 24 main US seasons. That's even including BB1. The three celebrity US Bay Brothers seasons. The one digital over the top season. And the 10 Big Brother Canada seasons. So one's kind of question now, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But yeah, I'm going to rank all 38 seasons of the show, I'm going to put some instant tiers involved in the show, and at the end of the video I'll let you know how I would personally rank every single season of Big Brother. And I would definitely love to know how you guys would rank every season down below in the comments, and let me know any other tier lists you guys want to see me do in the future. It could be from ranking like certain seasons of a TV show or a certain movie franchise. Like, I would not mind doing this, again, this is something I definitely want to do more of on stage because it actually it's kind of fun on stage. I got a weird thing I'm wanting to do more of this so let me know any others you want me to do down below in the comments so enough be on the bush let's get started with the tier list shall we into this tier list and see I got every season of big brother on here I got all three seasons sorry about this I can't get rid of it but I got all Seasons came much earlier, and this is basically the tiers. Uh, we have Train Rack, which basically is the D minus to F tier, Bad Run, D plus, Ne, C, Mixed Bag, C plus tier, Could Be Better, B minus tier, Thumbs Up, B tier, Good Run, B plus tier, Great Time, A minus tier, A to A minus tier. So you win A plus tier and the super high head of household, which is, well, basically, basically, the top of the top, the upper echelon of the show. But anyways, now that I said, let's get started with, now we're going to start off with Big Brother 1, which is, it's just like this is a reason why people don't talk about Big Brother 1, because it's obviously radically different to where Big Brother 1 is now, so... It's going in the bad runs here. That's sorry I'm not talking about because there aren't much I can really say about it. Like maybe it's having Chicken George who appears in All Stars. Also mine spoilers for some of these seasons, by the way. There really isn't much I can really say about the first season. Like and that's the reason why people don't talk about it and well for good reason. That's what I'm gonna say. Now we get to Big Brother 2. The season that really launched Big Brother into the stratosphere. We, we get the HOHs and the nominations, and you also get iconic players like, like Will Kirby, Mike Berkey, Nicole, Hardy, Monica, Bunky. Honestly, you also get some infamous moments like Shannon playing a toilet with Harvey's toothbrush. It has to actually happen. The first time someone got, the first time someone got expelled from the game. I'm getting which, it's moments better for worse, honestly, and also... There's a lot of great moments here, honestly, but I think that doesn't really hold up the best today, considering, again, it doesn't actually have the power of veto, which is introduced next season on the show, so, because that, it definitely is exactly, you know, the best, if I'm being honest, so, but I think it's still a lot of goodness to why I'm putting it in the deserving win category. 
Now we have Big Brother 3. I think I definitely appreciate it now more, honestly. Recently, you, know, you do get a lot of great plays here. They're going to get Lisa, Daniel Reyes, who people are still claiming that she should have won that season. And what's doing is because, well, they don't never really had jury here, which is what they changed that Big Brother 4. <laughs> interesting, interesting. And she and Jason are still considered two of the best players to have ever played Big Brother, and for damn good reason. Reason being, you got players like Marcellus, and his infamous like veto dumb move in this season also introduced the power of veto, which a nominee can actually feel though. It was kind of weird how they do it here though. There are at least for some points. Honestly, and then you also got a play, member plays like Roddy, Jerry, the cast itself is really great and memorable. It does have kind of slow parts into it as well, which is why I'm not like, feeling this one of the best, but it's I definitely appreciate more the more I think about it. So I'll probably be bird three in the great times here. And now we get to one of the more forgettable seasons of the show in Big Brother 4. A season that, aside from June and Allison and Erica and some other players, this was, aside from have some great plays to cast itself, so aside from the X Factor twist where some contestants repeated with their exes, now all of them for some kind of forsaken reason. This season I just never really clicked with. It seems that I don't think it has like a, any distinct number of moments. So I never thought season has been that interesting, honestly, and I'm, and I'm not the only one who thinks that, so it's going in the could be better tier, which again is. To be minus here, which is it's not a bad season by any means that's doing is offensive wrong, but it doesn't do anything that really like blows me away either. That's what I'm saying. Then we got Big Brother Five. Five five five. See a season that has a whole some more memorable players here, like with Drew, Diane, the Comis, and Jace, who is definitely one more memorable players here, and also this was the first season that introduced the backdoor tactic, which is not been used in mostly every season on the show. Where basically they get two pawns and then they, you, and then the, one gets taken off, and they they backdoor the other player of this other of, of the season, which leads to some interesting draw that happens, and and you get some memorable players that again with Diane Nicole Miss Drew, not the most memorable one more in terms of personality. But he definitely is a great player. Cowboy was hella fun during the summer show. This also had the memorable Project DNA twist where Cowboy and the Comets were basically apparently to be siblings. Siblings and he also got the twin twist where basically twins switched with each other throughout the game which I thought added a nice thing, thing to the game. We you know one twins kind of basically screwed up the game later on which is kind of hilarious when that happened. When that did happen. <laughs> sorry. sorry. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. You also get some, again, you also get some memorable fights that happen this season as well. As well as some memorable relationships that happen. Again, the Project and Twist was definitely a pilling thing that happened throughout the season. And you get, you get a great final four round and everything. And you get, yeah, a very memorable winner in Drew. It's like, it's not kind of like an interesting personality from, I was like, I forgot. I remember it, it was that, but I still do enjoy the BB9. It's going in a great time tier. Okay, now we get to Big Brother 6. And this is a season that's considered to be probably one of the most beloved seasons of the show, mostly because of its cast and how the all star season that we'll talk about next is seems like considered a lot. Be contestants and I mean the cast is iconic for again a reason. We get this boy Raj Janelle who is basically the queen of Big Brother. And you guys have members like James and also Kaser and Howie for better for worse. And you guys have other players like Bo, Rachel, Jennifer, and you guys have got that memorable Kaser backdoor move where you got brought out immediately as he returns to the game and also got the week three which is probably one of the best weeks in the history of Big Brother. You do get some incredible moments though among the best of the show. The show you also got one of the most fights in Eric and Michael in week two as well and you get some incredible memorable moments here and also the secret health is a little more interesting. But I never was high on this season as most people would. Like again obviously it's still a great season of the show. But I was never like top tier with the show. And I think a lot of that really comes to the Friendship Alliance, which I never really been high on, honestly. I think Millie and Maggie in the bed, which I seem to be pumping the bed for my least favorite final two in the history of the show. And hope I'm not the one of the things that I just never really clicked with her then, honestly. I always found it kind of annoying. And Maggie was fine, honestly. I kind of grew on her a little bit, but... Yeah, just some of the people in that alliance I never really clicked with as much as most people. 
honestly. I'm not sure that's just me, but I, I, I know a lot of people really have a season that's like super high, honestly, but I know who actually just has been one of those people, so. But it's still going in the great times here, just not on the tier details. I'm sure some of you probably would want to do it, but. Anyways, now we get to Big Brother All Stars, which is. I'm just gonna try it's the first season that's going in the Super HOH tier. Which is actually gonna be the upper echelons of Big Brother. And for good, good reason. Good reason. It's one of the first things I actually did watch, honestly, and get you to get some great plays, memory returning, some not really playing the best games, but it's weird seeing playing these players back to be for a second time, honestly. And returning seems like there's a reason why returning plays seems always just so fun to experience. And this is basically why. So why? I'm gonna do, you can, and also because of chill town will make the world that makes season so much fun to watch with their cops like <laughs> phone calls. That's uh, still the most hilarious moments in the history of the show. And, you know, get, got the damn Ray's returning and she playing her games by her game by George. You can George be a uh, hoot to watch from beginning to end. By him be all, only be about one place to return, he was definitely a hoot to watch, honestly. You get to fun back doors, you can get Janelle playing a, not a great game, and of course her back door move in the final four is one of the best b m moments in the show's history, and still one of the best moments in the show's history, period. You know, look, and while they didn't have many like, fights or insane moments as other seasons of the show, it's really ended up all in Chill Town and the moves that I made throughout the season that really highlight Big Brother All Star as a top tier season, in my personal opinion. Speaking of top tier seasons, Big Brother 8. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm gonna get straight to it, but this is also going in the high tier, honestly. I'm not sure if, if I'm the only one that has done this tier, but in terms of just pure entertainment alone, Big Brother 8 has always been one of my favorites when I first watched it, and it still freaking is. Honestly, and they depend on how you enjoy my seven characters, honestly. Most typically Evil Dick, but I think he's one of the most entertaining people to ever be on the show, honestly. It's by his questionable, some questionable stuff he has done recently, which I'm not going to get into. When you talk about him on this season, he was so entertaining, honestly. And you find out with his kind of touching story, him trying to bond with his Danielle, who he had dropped for two years. And I mean, it's still a bit when I do talk right now, honestly, but it's still a great story to watch unfold. Honestly, Dan has also a great character as well, and he has some other great characters like you, know, you got Eric and his whole Mexican play stuff that definitely was fun to watch, even though it kind of lessens his impact in the game, and that's kind of why people still want Eric to return in for good reason. Jessica was great, Zach, Jamika, Jen was a lot more fun than I actually remember her being, honestly. I used to hate her, but I actually enjoy her. Yeah, and then players like Amber and the Dustin Backdoor move, Final Nine was fantastic. TV and the like, this has a great cast all around, honestly, with a great drama, great fights, and Evil Dick just creates such a erratic behavior again that might depend on your enjoyment. But he ends up being a fantastic character that has some great emotional moments, especially near the end of the, sh of the show. Where, you know, it's basically him trying to reconnect with his daughter Danielle and basically winning for her. I mean, hell, he freaking used the veto on her when he was still on the block. <laughs> so. So, I mean, he's definitely not a great player, that's for sure, but definitely an irritating character. And this is just irritating all around, not just from him, but from all the characters, all the people on the board. And that's what always, why I always enjoy coming back to Big Brother 8. I'm not sure if the normal thinks that, but that's just me. Now we get to Big Brother 9, a season that always is an interesting season to watch, and definitely one of the more divisive seasons of the show. Show again, this was the first winter edition of the show, and it kind of has like you were competing in pairs in, for the first few weeks. And you use some very questionable, controversial moments, especially in the first couple weeks of the show. I'm not sure how soon people acted on the show, and having the worst people play ever with Jacob, who really blew up his game for literally no freaking reason. And of course, the whole fire between Chelsea, Amanda, and, uh, and Joshua that said some. Pretty questionable stuff, honestly, and that's going to win an Anna who basically said some questionable things involving autistic people that still kind of make a the wrong way and kind of what makes me consider him as my least favorite winner of the show or in the bait for my least favorite winner. I'm not trying to speed, but after I never kept Anna anyway, so that kind of want that, but 
this time you do get some ugly players like Ryan, Sheila, Sharon, Natalie, to an extent, James, the fantastic character across the board. Honestly, I think Chelsea even has their fun moments. I think some of the early boots, I think, also have their fun moments as well. As well, I think once the PS Dark Hunter scenes, it gets a lot more fun and interesting. I'm sure you do get some free fun moments and some great interactions, but as a whole, I've never been huge on this season and looking back on it. But it, there's still a lot to enjoy. It, this one of the seasons where there's a lot to enjoy and a lot to not enjoy, so it's going in the mixed back category. I'm just going to to it. Yeah. I got no, no introduction because Big Brother 10 is definitely the best season. At least the best US season of Big Brother. There's actually one season that actually kind of topped it, but we will get to that when we get there. But Big Brother 10, do I need to say it? If you're a Big Brother fan, I'm pretty sure every Big Brother fan would have this season as number one. And for honestly, damn good reason, because Big Brother 10, I think, is a fantastic season. It's basically why Big Brother is such a great show, why people enjoy watching it, and people are begging it for it to go back to this format, go back to why it made Big Brother so beloved in the first place. Like, seriously. And they seriously, it, 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 like, seriously, it, it's, dude, seriously, like, you know why this season works? Because it was simple. Time for Mega's twist that happened in week four of all the games. Who, by the way, is the best people player of all time. There was still twists. No shocking moments or anything. It's just people that don't dare to play. And you get some of the most fantastic moments in the entire game. You get, oh, that Keisha's birthday moment that we, I think week four happened in the week four, I believe. It's still the best moment in the entirety of Big Run as a whole. That's because, again, it was simple. It was... No big twists, no feeling like having to overpower things or do this or do that. Like, I wish Big Brother would go back to this type of thing because, yeah, I think a lot of us can agree the twist formats made that lately have really been the best. And I'm, no, I'm not the only one who thinks that. It's been the issue with the show for like years for now. But I really hope they go back to this format at some point. But yeah, you got, you got a great cast, great fights, great moments, fantastic interactions. Stingy seems to be the best player of all time. To Big Brother 11, which, mind you, was the first Big Brother season I have ever watched. This was the season that made me a big fan. So I might have a little bit of nostalgia bias towards it, honestly. But I still do enjoy this season, honestly. Again, some players are not as below the memory than I originally would have done, honestly. So I'm not high on a couple people, like... I thought that I do love Jeff. He's definitely not as highly liked as I remember him being, honestly, and he was there with Jordan to an extent. And some of the players, like Antios, can get my nerves a bit sometimes, and some of the versions are definitely better than others, and I curious how to was was way too overpeat, how you know lead to a great black backdoor, but it's time lead to some whining moments that I'm not a fan of, but but again. I still think it's a great season. I think it has, has great characters on. So, again, Kevin's a fantastic character. It was great to see him back on, all, on the second All-Star season. Despite, I mean, we'll, get, we'll get to that when we get there. Again, Russell was a fantastic character with his constant fights. And, and I still do enjoy Jeff and Jordan. Um, Michelle's still great TV. Um, the franchise has come back, honestly. Now he's a little bit better than I remember to be, but I'm, you know, I'm still really not huge for that. I just realized I'm not just, so, so, so around the Alps. I'm not really, really like. I don't know, honestly, though, I'm pretty sure that's come for a lot of people. But it's like, overall, still a great season, still has a lot of great fights, a lot of great moments, so it's going in the great time tier. Which is basically, the, again, the AMI tier. Be Brother 12. An interesting season to talk about, because by it being one of the more predictable seasons of the show, like, it's really high on that being just the most predictable seasons of the show. It's still a season that I hold in to such high regard because mostly of the Brigade Alliance with Hayden, Enzo, Lane, and Matt, and the cast as a whole, again. While I definitely have my like, mixed feelings on Brandon and Rachel, mostly Rachel, like, 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 I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm always divided how I feel about Rachel. She's definitely a reality good show player that I always so conflicted on how I feel about her. Because, like, in sometimes the moments she's actually fantastic television, and in other times she annoys the crap out of me. And hopefully I'm not the only one to extent, but that's just how I always felt about Rachel when the season aired. And she definitely has a great moment, and that's, that's what I kind of feel about her first time, because she just has a great moments and some pretty... <laughs> moments. But I think it really is the cast itself that really does elevate the season, honestly, and while well, it's time to twist and 
play too much, honestly, because it, it ended up being the first one evicted. You do get a lot of great fights and a lot of great moments, and while the gameplay is kind of stunning to marry us, it's still fun, great gameplay, mostly because of the relationship between certain characters, and the cast itself just being fantastic characters as a whole. But I still, I still do think Bridget Toll is one of the best seasons of the show, in my opinion. And screw it, it is going in the Super HOH High HOH Head of Household tier. Now we get to Big Brother 13, which is another season that had Rachel Riley in the who ended up winning this season, which I'm self shocked that actually happened. So I had some some question about production decisions, like one in the final six, where they had built Pandora's boss, which is basically a twist that they come in, have some random stuff happening, and they stop pretty much doing this. And, and this basic cost, and this also season that had pairs as well. As well, um, that made us great television. And some when it was introduced, but they kind of brought it back in final six, and you can tell this is clearly a production decision to basically keep Rachel and Jordan in the game. Honestly, and then which is also same kind of thing. You have to be on the show, which was well, an interesting t thing on the show, and then Dick ended up leaving the show on the first week, and well, yeah. Jeff Dorn definitely a lot, a lot more fun like Bull here, and Jeff back in the final step, it's definitely one of the best backdoor moments of Charles' history, I think, as I don't think Shelly, my hunch if you Shelly, I think she shouldn't be as hated as she was on the show, because she really got a lot of hate for this moment. I kind of want to say huge, but I'm not going to talk about that, but you get some fun players, honestly, and you also get this hilarious fun moment when one player basically kind of back to it themselves and offers to be on the block because they want some certain power, but that doesn't end up working. But being can great players like Portia, Kalila, um, Adam's a fun character as well. Well, Keith, Cassie, mm, Dominic was also a good character, it's good that he did actually up until the girl actually got married. And it doesn't make a lot of fun moments. I think the, the twist, like I mentioned, in Final Six does bring the season down for me, unfortunately. And again, some evictions and moments are bad than others, but I think there's still no joint to what I'm currently but 13. It, the first time being in the good run category, which basically is the B plus category. Now we get to paper 14, which basically have four coaches, four players like Dan Giesling, Mike Berge, Janelle, and Brittany from Big Brother 12 returning as coaches. At first they wanted to actually play, but now they will be able to for like two, three weeks in. And yeah, I love Big Brother 14. It's definitely going in the super high HO head of out of tier. Mostly from Genki Sling alone, because while he was down in the base in the, in the talk of being the best player of all time BB10, this pretty much confirmed that. Especially his final aim moment, which is Still the best moments in the show's history, and it, it is blindside the final four is still one, and, and the and the blindside move he made at the final four is still was in the way for, originally was the best blindside in the show's history, but one don't take that, but we will get to that when we get there. But yeah, Big Brother, once again, fantastic all around, great characters, great moments, hilarious hijinks ensuing and everything. I'm I'm excited for that really hands moments. In, a, in the week two and everything, and him kind of blowing his own game, like, oh, what a crazy H or H that was, but, overall, fantastic season. Big Brother 15. Oh boy, one of the more divided seasons of the show. And it is not used to hate, especially when it was airing. But I think I've grown a little bit more faith in towards, mostly because of the winner, Andy. I think it's actually a lot better winner than people give him credit for. The problem is that he was poorly edited. His win was poorly edited throughout the season, so it's not really why some people think he's probably one of the most least popular winners in the show's history. But when you actually look at his game, it's actually pretty impressive. Unfortunately, one show. I know there were some players that I definitely grown a little bit more towards, like but Gray's a fun character. Spencer has his and Judd have the moments. Unless I was actually a lot better character than I actually anticipated. Uh, yeah, Helen's actually a lot more memorable playing character than I would expect. I remember to be. Even like Candace and Howard. Everyone else, uh, Aaron, especially with her comments in it, that caused a lot of controversy. I'm not even going to mention that. Amanda was irritating, and Jim Reese by my least favorite runner up in the show's history, which is saying a lot, but she's the one of the most annoying players to ever be on the show, in my opinion. 
Be that. But yeah, I even thought this was my least favorite season one one, but I think the win from Andy and I like his own players more. Do Elvis isn't just a bit, but it's still one of my least favorite seasons in the show, so it's the first season that's going in the meh uh, Okay, now we get to Big Brother 16. An interesting season that introduced the Battle of Life twist, which basically had like two HOHs and four nominees each week, which was a complete concept in theory. But you realize that people could actually break that twist and cause a lot more problems. And it's no wonder the devils end up being scrapped and end up only being the pre-trade phase next season. So, yeah, season I was not really high on, though I actually did it better than the last season and does have some great players again. Derek, one of the best players of all time, one of the best winners of all time. Curry, one of the best runner-ups of all time, honestly, and eventually also one of the best winners in a season we'll get into later. And, and later, Nicole was definitely, sorry, Crushable was definitely a great fun and was my first few subway crush. Crush, Donnie, one of the most nicest people ever on the show. And despite how he's now, Zach was one of the most entertaining characters on this season. Unfortunately, like, I'm not going to see him back on the show. Considering some of what's happened to him recently and how he feels about CBS now, but he was still in that character. And even plays like Amber and Devin, like I said, be fun characters that have just amazing downfalls. Some of my players are not huge job, and I was huge on Caleb, and he was kind of a sexy crush on Amber that really brought the seasons down for me and still gets more to compare. I don't happy he's doing, they, do, they have a relationship now, and he's doing better now, and much more likable now. Oh, now, Frank Grande. Yeah, Christine. Uh. Some of the plays I've just never really been huge and high on, honestly. Victoria was okay, honestly. And there's just not really much innovative gameplay. I mean, Duke is a great moment, honestly, especially with the fi fi final like, nine round where basically one killed one person tried to throw a competition to get rid of Frankie, and Frankie ended up winning. Like, well, it was obvious, it was still a fun, great moment. We'll see what happened, the conversations that happened in that moment. But overall, this season was just fine. It's fine. It's not really an event season, though. Aside from my kill because of Crush and Amber, this season that re didn't really like irritate me, but I still kind of feel the same way I felt about this season when I first watched it. So it's going in the mixed bag category. BB17. A season I definitely appreciate a lot more when I'm more thinking about it. And while definitely the similar twist didn't kind of just flunked, honestly, and while some players are kind of not the most interesting in the world. You do get some overall good cast and Steve, who is definitely surprising you. But where will be winner? Liz and, and, the tw and his twin Julia. Vanessa be a player that I really wasn't huge on when I first watched this season. But she's honestly one of the best, now one of my new favorite players. The same with Johnny Mac, who, if you guys do an, an, a stream play season, please have Johnny Mac on here. He's one of the most irritating characters ever. I think it wasn't on, the, on the second all those seasons, it was on the kind of machine, if I'm being honest, and I'm, no, I'm not the only one that thinks that. Austin has his moments, James was an hilarious character and has his moments as well, Meg was hilarious. Becky, eh, Jackie, she was fine. She was fine, Shell and Clay have their moments, Jason was a fun character here at times. There's also brought Davon, who was, it was by, by the chance, and really done well while her season is a memorable character. Again, some players and weeks are better than others, but it's still a really good season to watch, honestly. It still has some great moments and some great moves, and has an amazing final blind blind side as well. So, this is going in the good run category. Now we get to Big Brother 18. Another season I would put in the mixed bag category. A season that actually brought bad players like Nicole, James, Davon, and Frank would be 14. Okay, and this is, this is definitely one of those seasons that's kind of like up and down on this too. I think some weeks and moments are great, and some these weeks are just there and kind of predictable. And you do get some great moments again. Seeing Nicole actually win this season was actually incredible. I think her game is wildly underrated in this season. You also get Paul, who is one of the more divisive players on the show. But I actually really liked him, honestly. He's one of the players I think I actually kind of disliked him the more dislike when he first appeared, but I actually grew to really like him the more one to spend some possible questionable comments, but in terms of personality, he was fun to watch. James might not be the best player in this season was also fun here as well. He also gets some money on plays like Victor, Natalie, Michelle. Corey was okay, honestly, and 
Probably I don't think he's as bad as I remember him to being and his downfall was epic. Like really epic. Which I think is actually much better than like people get credit for. And he was in the preacher plays like Bronte like Bronte and Jose who were kinda of fun characters and Jose also had fun downfall as well. It's not huge on the whole day one twist with one of elimination or eviction for basically in some weird way they had someone to end up leaving on day one which I never really been fond of when they done this in 14, 18, next season and 21 and I hope I'm gonna do stop doing that so they don't bring that back. Please don't bring that back. But again, it's okay honestly and it's, it's a scene that I don't think has really like huge memorable moments despite having a few great moments since there were interactions. It's definitely has some fun moments to be had in BB-18 but as a whole it's just something I don't really have too much to say about. I know. That's all I've got to say. Bye. <sighs> BB-19. Maybe the only season that is going in the train right category. I hate BB-19. Like, there's always, like, there's basically three portions like this. Like, there's these, there's three moments that have happened for the time period that almost made me stop watching this see the show out together. There are definitely two others that we will get into. But there were always those three things that I meant about BB-19. You know, those three moments that made me stop watching the show. Or, or close to stop watching. And this isn't what this season because it was so boring, so uninteresting. But I have a couple of fun like characters here and there. Even they couldn't say this season that was just so boring. It was filled with so much bullying, so much terribleness that was happening for a lot of these players. Characters that were just annoying just for the sake of it. And just... And it was just predictable all the way through. Everyone was just fanboying on Paul on scene. Like, I love Paul. I'm gonna do whatever he says. Yeah, and then some of the players are still some of my least favorite people to ever appear on Big Brother. And again, do I need to say why this season sucks? Like, I'm pretty sure everyone agreed that season was terrible, and I still think that the fact that Paul still didn't end up winning the season. It's still one of the most shocking things to be on the show, and I'm still not thinking whether that's a good thing or not. But yeah, BB-19 is my, personally my least favorite season of the show. But now we're going to what the next year will be the least favorite to one of my personal favorites of what to be the best modern season of the show in Big Brother 20, which is going in this super high, super high head of hassle tier. And the reason why I do enjoy Big Brother 20 a lot is really because of the cast. Like, this has definitely the best modern cast in the show's history. Like, if you're going to get people on this cast, like, if you're going to have people come to you, like, if it's on your cast, it's, this is the ones that you should have to go to because the cast here, are, we're here to play, we're here to game, and they're just fun, likable, or people that you just love to hate. You know, literally every person on this cast was fun, memorable in one way or another. Even the pre-jury thing, like, Mind you, I consider Big Brother 20 to be, have the best pre-jury phase in the history of Big Brother. Even despite that whole technology twist that they go to with the hacker twist that happened in a couple weeks and the, the ice store twist that they do with those powers, honestly, they actually they really matter much or they don't really have a huge impact, so I never really mind them. At the end of the day, they still have some fun and hilarious moments around the show. But again, the cast, again, from Casey, Tyler, JC, Angela, Hotstar, Haley, Sam, Brett, aka okay, I should not like, but I love his entertainment practice so much on this season. You get, you get fun death on Swaggy, you got Caitlyn, who basically just destroyed her home freaking game and made one of the most what the what decisions in the show's history. Rachel Weston, who I think is a lot better than I actually get the credit for. Friend for Bailey, like, this season has full of so memorable characters and full of memorable moments on this season. A season that, season again, this is how you do a modern season of the show, right? And even when the season kind of predictable, I was still invested. I was still into into it because you still get the fun gameplay and some fun character moments. <laughs> I'm not, so I'm definitely like down on the second half of the season, like some people are, because the season was still entertaining. He's like, yeah, this is season I think honestly gets better the more you think about it. But I absolutely adore Big Bird 20. And it definitely is the best modern season of the entire show. Again, again, if it, again, this is what I hope Big Bird actually also does more of. 
these type of seasons just actually have people that actually dare to play the game and don't have this or that or this or that. Like, it'll be funny until we get to Big Brother 21. An odd scene of the show because this also has the second moment that almost made me stop watching the show and a you know, terrible personal beat that happened in week three when Cole Anthony, one of the most likable players to ever play Big Brother, basically gets bashed for no particular reason and gets bullied by nurses by Isabella by a lot of five like it's funny you know I said people 20 have the best pre-jury phase in the show's history but 21 has the worst pre-jury phase in the history of the show and because of how a lot of people act and that, that's big oh another big lion that's going to dominate the entire game which is kind of an issue that's going but the alliance is just dominating people they, they could use that to just break the game and that is going to be another case on they find some likable plays in the show and the whole great and the whole camp stuff they try to go for a while. Like, why are you overdoing your twists? Honestly, like, seriously, why? 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 All that stuff really just made the, you know, in the bad of being the worst season of the show. But I think after the alliance actually, like, broke up over two people that actually kind of knew each other and and everything and all that stuff like it actually got a lot better honestly because you get actually good blind signs and well you do have a couple questions which is that never really led to anything you do get some fun fiction some fun fights which is that talk tuesday with nick and christy some of the players that wish were boys end up coming actually a lot more likable you actually get some great moods and well i'm still not fond of mickey as a whole or at all he at least made some pretty good, good and decent moves. I do, unfortunately, probably would be the least fair despite his terrible actions and how he treats Holly sometimes. That bit is kind of weird to watch, honestly, because while the post jury still has his rough moments, it's at least a lot more fun and watchable. You do get some fun and great moments and the great fictions that happen, so. And an amazing final five round and with an amazing move from a winner, so. I had to be worth the Purple Bowl 21. So, I'm going to put it between one and the Kirby Birds here. Yes. Oh boy, Big Reddit all stuff here. I think we were have waiting for 15 freaking years. 15 freaking years. And it's one of the worst seasons of the show and the mo one of the most disappointing seasons of the next scene. I actually kind of wanted to make a video just describing why this season was still disappointing, honestly. It does so much to dissect with the season, why it is fortunately still disappointing, why this is a season that proves uh, the worst that Big Brother has to offer. So, that's all I'm going to say right now, but it goes in the bad run tier. Probably my second least favorite, honestly, behind the 19. And so, the better returning season is unfortunately very disappointing. Now we get to Big Brother 23. And honestly, an interesting season, considering, you know, this was season where we actually had the first black winner to appear on Big Bird again. Uh, they, again, they definitely do well to having them be, uh, the show cast as Billy's being more diverse than the cast, honestly. Well, casting still kind of has a problem. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're at least more diverse, so I will give them that. And this definitely is an honesty that I think the cast definitely elevates this season, honestly, because this probably has some of the most active gameplay in the show's history. Well, it definitely was for no with the cause with the with the All Black Alliance. I don't actually remember the name of my book, but with All Black Alliance that happens, uh, the Cookout Alliance. It was all the game feel kind of stagnant throughout the season, but the cast itself from Xavier, Isa, Highland to uh, sorry, some questionable moments. Hannah, Tiffany, who's one of the best modern game players out there, Alyssa, Derek X, Claire, Brittany, even some of the players, like from Christian, Brett, Frenchie, who has probably the most disastrous first day choice in the show's history. Honestly, and it's one thing that doesn't have the best gameplay in the world, that it's probably the one thing that does bring the season right down for me, honestly, is the very standard gameplay and not really interesting if I really happen and I were having many great moves that happen throughout the season. The cast really does save it also home and along with the word of cause of the Crooked Alliance which is I'm pretty sure what everyone's always going to remember people 24. 
And depending where you think it's going to or not, it makes season still, I think, a still enough season. So it's the first one that's going in the thumbs up category. And now we get to Midbrow 24. <coughs> it's season that I, has a lot of problems to it, honestly, with obviously how this also has the time with that has that third moment where basically I almost stopped watching just from the first week with everything involving Taylor and what she has been through and how she was treated throughout the season, especially in the first couple of weeks and how she was unfairly trashed by a lot of people by not doing anything wrong. And the terrible twists that keep on happening with the backstage stuff, the bestie bestie stuff. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean that House was actually was pretty interesting, so I wish she was executed a little bit better. And some of the players do act like pretty terrible for a lot of times, but I still think it was enjoyable, honestly. Because, again, I think some of the camera members I think are still fun, honestly. Again, I think, I, I, I think some camera members are still fun, honestly. Like, and, and, and you, I mean, I, again, Mira was actually a fun presence by her behavior towards Taylor, honestly. And I think Jasmine actually was a lot more fun of a player than I remember being by her being also a big Taylor hater, as they, as they say. Joseph had a good time on the show. Kyla has some fun moments. Terrence and Michael being a big beta king, honestly. Brittany was also great. Even Monty has his moments. Tinder, it was okay. And Alyssa and Amy are probably two of the most forgettable players ever on the show. By Alyssa, basically making pretty far in the game. I still don't think I really know much about Alyssa. <sighs> So they didn't have a lot of problems this season, but I think what really elevated this season, of, like, like, honestly, a, a little bit honestly for me, is the fact that Taylor, someone who basically got bullied for a lot of this season, ended up winning the season, which led to, led to an amazing story throughout this, that she actually did win this season. Now, much Taylor's probably one of the, probably not supposed to be the best gameplay in the world, is one of the most likable winners ever on the show. So despite the many issues that play this season that should put at least in the end that mixed bag on the man category, Taylor's win puts the season up in the thumbs up category. Though season still plays some of the worst aspects of modern, but this season is basically some of the best of what people can really do, especially in week three where we where they actually like switch on an alliance and actually make moves actually that benefit them instead of just following what other people want. Which has also been an issue with the show for a while. And actually, you know, make moves and actually, well, play the game. Well, you know, it still has some of those words that I have to mention with the twists and how some people's certain behavior and all this and that. But I think that's it was behavior's own, but again, I think Tails win definitely elevates it. Okay, now, to you know, the tier list right here, we now got to talk about every U.S. season on the show. Now let's talk about the other U.S. and then get to all the Canada seasons. <clears throat> First up we have BB Over the Top, which is the only digital version they've done, and I suppose this is the only one they actually have done so far, because I think that's probably could have been interesting, honestly, but I've always enjoyed this design position a bit, but I think again, mainly because of the cast, honestly, and the cast is fantastic, and the gameplay was great throughout the entirety of the season, you get some great fights, you get some great characters, I mean, this brought Morgan Willis into the world, who's now a very popular reality star, and who also won the season, rather deserving. This one by Jason from BB17, who I'm kind of mixed on how I feel about him. I think some of his actions and how he acted towards people, such as Shelby, was pretty just. But yeah, but it's good as he said he made, at least made a far he didn't last during the plan, so that's good at least. <coughs> and that's why I think that's good at least. And you also get players, great players like Chrissy, um, Shane, Danielle. Shelby, who's hilarious from the to end, Justin, Alex, like, you get some fantastic characters in this season that, unfortunately, it's like we're not going to see actually play this, this show, but I would love to see at least, at least, like, shit, some of these players, like, and I think, on uh, actual season play, they will have pretty potential. <laughs> so, personally, I don't know if I'm the only one thinks this, but, Over the T-Top is going in the super high in the house tier. Now we get to the three celebrities, and I'm gonna do this like really quickly, honestly, because I mean, there's not really much I can but personally, because there's not much I can really say about these seasons from being for real. The first celebrity, I think, is still the best. It's going in the good brunt here. Definitely a fun, fun, short season, big brunt. I have a few victories that I'm not really a fan of, but anyways, still a pretty good season. Celebrity Brunt 2 on the good brunt here. I think it's a little too crazy for my liking, honestly. It's, honestly, it's probably being. Has some really fun, hilarious moments and having some questionable twists that came on the show, but 
I liked it was a decent season with some fun characters. And the most recent season that came in this year, unfortunately, is the right here. As, uh, like I said, from Todrick and a few other plays, honestly, the season was just, like, there. It wasn't really... It was in fact some good moments, especially in the week three where basically one player basically just screwed his own game. There's not much I can really say about this season. Sorry. Okay, now we're gonna get to talk about all ten seasons of Bill Pick and I'm and I'm sure it's about to be long it is, so I'm probably not gonna talk about some of these for too long. But mind me. But let's talk about the first two seasons of Canada, which in some way I think in some ways it clips his big run in way, because I think they start airing on paper, it was kind of on a downward spiral, and kind of still is, but not on the huge downward spiral it originally was. So, that's not the story. But that's obviously what this paper wasn't doing, doing good to Canada. Actually, it proves that, hey, if we get players to actually play the game, and even if we do have some twists, we can actually, you know, have a season that actually, you know, delivers on actual good seasons. So, honestly, it's like maybe one season done. What gets out? Gets out. There wasn't any of these seasons I really disliked. Then some seasons are said to be the best seasons of the show. So let's start with BB Can One, which I think both seasons often a great no with some great blind sides, a very interesting cast. Um, I kind of especially well, one more basically one contestant I accidentally voted for the wrong person and they ended up winning. It's going great here, and I would also say same thing for BB Can Two. I think both up, I mean, it's also a great season that really delivers more on the craziness. It has a memorable winner, some fantastic characters with Netta, Sabrina, Rachel, Adele, and everything. All <clears throat> kind of votes some kind of question about, and also brought Ica as well, who's a iconic character as well. Big Brother King of the Three is going in the deserving win category. I, I think this definitely is a fantastic season of the show. Uh, show that was some of the pure criticism of the show. So, great memorable fights and great memorable interactions with some of the players. Some pretty crazy moves, especially also introduced the triple eviction. Triple eviction! By the way, I'll memorable players like Sarah, Godfrey, Ashley, Pilar, Brittany, and of course, Kevin Martin, Bruno. Just and a whole awesome season to watch. And then we get to BB Can 4, which was the first one I, I think I bullet watched all the way through. And it's also going in the great time category. I, I can definitely love it a messy season, but I think the mess just kind of makes it a lot of fun, honestly. <laughs> honestly. And the winners are probably my least favorite winners, if I'm being honest, because most of them personality wise. But you do get some fun players. And we got Nikki, rest in peace, because she did pass away, who was. And crazy and insane, and got Tim, who is a pretty interesting gameplay and makes one of the most dumb decisions in, in the game this season. You also got other players like Cassandra, Joel, Jarrett, Raul, Mitch, who I think is a player that has worthy of potential if he were to return. <clears throat> return. You do get some fun interaction and some fun moments between a lot of these players and everything, and some crazy moves that sometimes kind of does in the game, but. Still, in the West, so yeah, I enjoyed it. Now we get to BB Can Five, which is also going in the super high HOH tier. A season that basically has fans kind of based as like a fans versus favorite type of season, and and, and you think this season where the favorites were over the fans, but no, you got one week basically like four or five of them end up being voted out. You run out to one in the final eight and nine, there's only like two, three left. Like, it's like, it's like some of them give out in a row, which makes for an incredibly unpredictable season. And even the twist that introduces like the backwards eviction, that where basically they do like everything like backwards was actually a very compelling tw fun twist of witness. And even, even the fans themselves, films like Karen, Demetrius, Jackie, Emily. Dylan, all William, Dre, all incredibly memorable characters. Like everyone's memorable in, in the all interesting way. You get to, you, you get always to have one fun and crazy moment happening in nearly every eviction mission. You all get, you just get the great characters and Kevin Martin being an incredibly dominant and memorable winner throughout the time. The season, one of the more deserving winners, my Andrew. I mean, this definitely is one of my personal favorites of Big Brother. Then we get to BB Can 6, which is... 
and since which is going in the thumbs up category. Kind of a less of them season of the show, and I think some of the canons are really the most interesting in the world, and and Fry Guys is one of those seasons where I think it had it had some very interesting great moments, they just weren't really shown for some god for second reason. It's one it's one of the feeds, which I don't really watch honestly, because well, I don't have time for that. And m more interesting than the actual events that are shown, at least from what I gather from my heard. But you still get th some fun players like Paris and Keela and Derek and Erica being one of the most fun and interesting players on the show. I hope she does make her turn at some point. You also get some fun moments throughout the season as a whole. It just does, it's not really as memorable and just has that great, some the great, great moments that the other seasons are talked about. And I'm not going to that. Now we get to Baby Can 7, which is going in the Could Be Better tier. Yeah, it's here. Kind of like similar issues, honestly. I, when I do think that the, the lines of Adam, Dane, and Anthony are fantastic characters. Like these two players are some of my favorite players in BBK in history. It's just they kind of dominate the game, and I feel that makes some of the seasons kind of boring, honestly. I think there's still enough fun and enough interaction between some of the players and some of the cast members are still fun enough to where it doesn't like deteriorate my experience of this season and doesn't make it bad in my opinion, but it's aside from the players, this season is not really the most memorable in the world. <laughs> now, this would be one that I wanted to include BB Can A on this list because, well, BB Can A wasn't finished because this season aired when COVID started to become really serious, and because of that, they basically canceled the entire season. So, that's be one I even to include on here, but. In fact, this season definitely have potential possibly being the worst season of the show, considering some of the players and the actions and hell on like week two you got two people that get freaking expelled from the house. This is you really get people that get freaking expelled from the house and basically well Well and if the game change that we we were having another line of steamroll in this season, so who knows if it could have happened, but it's going to match you, honestly, but still not a bad season. One of the, one of the least favorite seasons on the show, still not a bad season by any means. Now we get to these two seasons, BBK9. Yes, going in the top tier, honestly. I think they definitely fixed a lot of the issues of the previous three seasons, and you get one craziest half season with... People, well, this season probably has some of the worst gameplay in the entirety of Big Brother. Like, oh my god, some of the gameplay here is terrible. And you get someone also in the house, and you also get the final six round, which is basically one of the best rounds in the history of the show. Not just, I guess, one of the things we had to see to believe, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> but you do get a fantastic cast of characters that are just so crazy and insane. You get some that make terrible, ridiculous moves. Honestly, and even in spite of the team twist that kind of just doesn't do much of anything, honestly. You still get a fantastic season that has great moments, great moves, terrible moves. But a season that has filled so much fun and character and energy. And now until the last season we were talking about. The most we, we the BB Can 10, which ended last season. And you, you want to know the interesting thing about this? Yes, BB Can 10. I'm just gonna say it around back. BB Can 10 is my favorite season of Big Brother. And I really thought about this. I really did. But as a whole, there's really not any season I enjoyed more than watching this season. Like, it pretty much took all the craziness I mentioned from b Can and I and just doubled upon in this season. Well, you know, like every week, like, you you get something compelling and interesting. Like, I'm not, like, week that should have been just a boring, simple, and just week. You get players making some of the most ridiculous and just, I don't know where moves in the show history. You get some, you get some of the biggest downfalls in the show history. You get some, some amazing blind sides, some, more iconic moments, which is one more involving a red gummy bear, that's all I'm gonna say. And you get what is arguably the biggest new blind side and shocking moment in the history, not just like Big Brother Canada, but Big Brother in general. 
For those of you this season, you know what I'm talking about, so I'm actually not going to say it. This season, I think you should watch for yourself. BB Can 10 is one hell of a season with so many incredible characters, an amazing cast, amazing moments, great gameplay, terrible gameplay, just a mix of craziness across the board, and you know, I really doubt about this, but again, similar to BB Can 10, to BB Can 10. Well, the season has a few the twists, honestly, with the triple fiction and a couple other things that happened. So, I bet you this, this safety chain vision that I hope that honestly I hope we see again. This is how you do a great, a great modern paper season. And I hope Paper US definitely learns from this. So, yeah. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed me discussing every single season of Paper tier list style. And I hope to do more of these tier lists down the road. I I mean to do one on Survivor in Hell's Kitchen at some point. Survivor Miles will do this month, and then one of the next season of Hell's Kitchen features airing, I will be doing a ranking back season as well. But how about how I would truly rank every season of the show? In Train Rank tier, we have Big Bird 19, be my least favorite, and Lip Dead Last. For the Bad Run tier, we have Big Bird 1 and Big Bird 22. The, and for the mid tier, we have Big Brother King the 8, BB 15, and Celebrity Big Brother 3. From the mixed bag tier, we have Big Brother 9, Big Brother 16, and Big Brother 18. But these are all, all in order, by the way. From the Could Be Better tier, Big Brother 21, Big Brother 4, Celebrity Big Brother 2, and Big Brother King the 7. From the Thumbs Up tier, Big Brother 23, Big Brother 24, and BB Can 6. From the Good Run tier, we have Celebrity Big Brother 1, Big Brother 13, and Big Brother 17. From the Great Time tier, we have Big Brother Can 4, BB 3, BB 11, BB 6, BB 5, Big Brother Can Season 1, and Big Brother Can Season 2. From the Deserving Win tier, we have Big Brother Canada 2 and Big Brother Canada Season 3. Now we have 10 seasons on the super high of Head of Household tier, the, which are 10 seasons here to be the upper echelon, the upper high Big Brother tier. And those seasons are Big Brother Over the Top, Big Brother 8, Big Brother 12, Big Brother 14, Big Brother All Stars, Big Brother Canada 5, Big Brother 20, Big Brother Canada 9, Big Brother 10, and Big Brother Canada 10. That's how I would personally rank all 38 seasons. And again, I would love to know your ranking down below in the comments. And again, let me know any other tier list videos you want me to do down below as well. And you know, it could be anything from just like game franchise rankings, a movie ranking, all that jazz. I would love to know what you want me to do down below in the comments. And hope you all enjoyed this tier list video. I don't know if it's going to be the best or whatever, but you know, I am done this time so, so let's see how it goes. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.